Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and this is SketchUp Square One, where we take a look at the fundamentals of using SketchUp. Today, we're gonna to talk about the materials window. So the materials window is a little different from uh, all the other windows that we've looked at um, in that it will function differently depending on your operating system. So the way it looks and functions on Mac is different from how it looks and functions on Windows. So this video will be split into two parts. We will put links down in the description. So if you're a Windows user, you can just jump to that. Uh, first, we'll take a look at Mac because that's the normal setup I have. That's what this is behind me is running right now is Mac. But then we will flip over to Windows and cover the exact same thing on how that works in the Windows UI. Let's hop in. Okay, so this is the materials window. This is pulled up by going to windows and turning on materials. You can also turn it on by turning on the paint bucket. Every time you hit the paint bucket, it will automatically open. Now on Mac, this is a little different from all of our other windows because you see it can't, I can't dock it. I can't put it in there. It's a little different on windows. We'll see that in a second. Um, it is floating here by itself. So just as a as it's something that I do, I usually work, if I'm modeling, I'll have two monitors and I'll take this color window and just, this material window and just slide it over onto the other monitor and leave it open all the time. Um, otherwise I have to deal with, take, you know, if, if, if I'm on the one screen, it takes up a lot of space and I have to close it. And the next time I hit paint bucket, it's gonna pop right back up. So uh, just an option, a thought for how, how to work with that on the Mac UI. So let's hop in and see what exactly this does. We're not going to talk about the paint bucket. We have another uh, video that covered that from a couple weeks ago. We're just going to look at what's inside this window and how this works. So the first up at the top, we have tabs. You can see as we switch through these tabs, different stuff shows up. Um, let's just talk about what's in each tab. The first is the color wheel. So in the color wheel, we have a color wheel. I know it was, it was pretty obvious. But what you can do here is click or drag your cursor through the color wheel and you'll see right down here at the, the bottom left is the color that is in your paint bucket. So as you move this around, you're changing what color you're going to apply. So if I come over here to red, it shows up red. One of the things I have in the color wheel is this uh, lightness slider. If I slide all the way to the right, every color shows up as black. If I go to the absolute left, then I have full saturation of whatever color this is. The lightness, how, how, how bright it is or how white it is, is controlled by how far my cursor is from the outside of the wheel versus the inside wheel. See there, if I, as I slide back and forth, I go from like a deep magenta color all the way up to light pink all the way to, if I get right in the middle, a white. So that's the color wheel. The right of that, I have sliders, and these sliders can change depending on the drop down here. I can go to grayscale slider, RGB, CMYK, and HSB. And what this is basically is just a different way to select colors. You can slide this and uh, get your values set up to change the color in the bucket. This, this screen also has the ability to, to uh, type in a hex color code. So if you're matching a different color on from some other program or from a, a whatever, any place you have that hex value, you can just type or paste that right in to get that color. Moving along, uh, here is the image uh, selector. So this by default is this spectrum, but we've actually done a video over on Skill Builders about how to import another image where I imported this paint chips. Uh, so you can actually pull in any image. It can be a photograph, it can be anything. And what this lets you do is move along that image and choose a color. So Spectrum's kind of nice because it does have, it's similar to the color wheel, but I can actually move around here and get different values right out of the image as opposed to mixing them myself with uh, the bars there. Mac has this colored pencils too. So there's, I forget how many here, like 48, something like that, colored pencils, where you can just come over and pick one and that color will go in. It doesn't matter where on the colored pencil you pick. So you can see on the image, I have a light stripe right here and darker over here. It's not gonna change depending on that. It's just gonna grab this color it has named teal and put that in my paint bucket. Finally, we have this uh, materials bar or tab. This is probably the most commonly one used when you, when you think about SketchUp putting materials on, this is kind of probably what you think about. So in here, I have this drop list and I can pick one of these and it will load up a bunch of materials. So this is where the default materials come. You've heard that if you've heard the uh, extension SKM, that's a SketchUp material file. You can create these files. Um, we won't go over that in this video, but you can actually create those or skill builders on that process of, of creating these files. 
So these are user defined, but there is a bunch of defaults in here. A lot of them, like I was showing, have uh, default materials in here, but there's also some for colors, like named colors here, uh, where I could scroll through and pick a color there also. Uh, there is this little home button right here. This is no, this is worth noting. When you click home, it's going to show you all the colors that are currently in the model. So the only thing I have in this model right now is Sumele and this little cube that I put red, yellow, and blue on. So that's all I have. I have my default color, which is this white, these colors right here, which are part of Sumele, and then the three that are in the cube. You'll notice at the bottom, there's a couple options here. One is opacity. I'm going to flip back to the circle to play with this a little bit. Uh, let's go to nice saturated color. Let's pick a red and you'll notice the opacity is set to hundred. This opacity stays as I flip through the different uh, value or different tabs here at the top. Opacity is just how see-through a material is. So I can go from zero. I can start sliding down to like a 50% value and see the 50% value turns kind of pink because it is 50% opacity. So it's 50% clear. If I slide all the way down to zero, then I'm completely clear. The white background behind the material is 100% see-through. As I slide that back up, it's gonna get more and more opaque. And eventually, when I get all the way to 100%, it's gonna turn full red. That opacity slider is available for any of the colors or materials you pick through whatever tab you have up right here. That is just about everything I can think to show on the Mac materials. So let's go ahead right now and hop over to Windows. And here we are on Windows. So in Windows, the Materials window is part of the default tab bar. You see I have that over here. Um, I can collapse it and similar to what we saw on Mac, if I pull up the paint bucket, it will automatically expand out. Um, so this is way to, laid out quite a bit differently. So at the top of the materials window is your current material. This is the material that is in your paint bucket right now. So if you click, you're gonna be putting this blue color on. And you got the name of the material right here and a couple options over here to the right. The first is a secondary display. So this will actually give you this same list right here twice. And this is useful if you want to create custom collections, that sort of thing, pass materials back and forth between collections. We're not gonna worry about that for this one, so I'm gonna go ahead and close it. Uh, below that is the create new material. We'll talk about that in just one second. And then select material to default. So if I click this, it's gonna put that same default material we saw before, we see it all the time, uh, white on the front and uh, gray on the back. So I can always jump to default material by clicking that. We'll come back to create new material in just a second after we look at the main, the bulk of the window. So down here, we have two tabs, select or edit. We're gonna just look at the select first. So under select, we have uh, some options here. The big thing being this drop down right here. This drop down is gonna show me all the materials that I have saved in folders uh, on this computer, this installation. So in model takes us to, these are all the materials that are in the model. So here I have, same as I saw on Mac, here's all the Sumeli colors and then my red, yellow, blue for my cube. If I wanna to switch to one of the others, so if I wanna go look at tile, I can click on tile and I'm gonna see these image-based materials that I could then pick and apply or edit. To the right here, we do have a little picker. So this is the same as, as hitting the uh, modifier key when you're in paint bucket to choose a color. And then there's this little fly out, which will allow you to modify collections or change the viewing of your material thumbnails. So as far as actually working with the materials, like I said, we do have an edit tab here and we have a create new. We're gonna look at create new first. Create new is gonna actually fly out a whole new window to work in. So in here, I have the color I'm working on and the name here. So since this is a brand new material, I can call it whatever I want. Below that, I have the option of choosing how I wanna pick the color. So I can change between sliders here. I have a RGB, HSB, and HLS uh, selector. And then I also have a color wheel. If I click color wheel, I get this little tiny color wheel, similar to what I saw on Mac. With the color wheel, I can actually slide around and pick a color I want. Then I have this slider right here, which lets me set uh, the lightness, I don't really know what the name of this is. Up is 100% of the color I'm choosing. Down is all the way to black. So regardless of what color I pick here, even if I pick white in the middle, if light is all the way set to dark, then it's always going to be full on black. 
I have the option below that to choose a texture to import. So if I want to pick in and uh, pull an image in, I can check that box and pull the image from a location. And then regardless of how or where, whether I use a slider, if I use a image, if I use the color wheel, I can set the opacity for material with this slider right here. So this lets me go from 100% opaque capacity. So if that's what all everything I have here is that, or I could slide it down to zero, which means the, the material is going to go in, but be 100% see-through. This is an invisible pane of glass kind of material, or I go somewhere in the middle where I get that hue of that colors applied, but I could still see through. Regardless of how I choose the material, I can set it an opacity using that slider or typing the number in there. If I want to take an existing material, so if I do want to say, um, I'll take this red that is in the box right here, I can always click edit. Edit allows you to go in and manipulate or change that material however you want. So if I was to flip back over to the color wheel and start sliding around here, look what happens. That color changes, but it also changes in the drawing. So this is not just manipulating a new color for choosing or for applying to the model. This is taking a model that's actually in there and making changes. So this is where I can actually see this slider here. See as I slide this down so I can see inside there all the way down to, it looks like it's gone, but it's still there. It's just fully see-through. So that edit lets me edit the existing material as opposed to new, letting me choose a material. So I think that's everything. That was a lot of uh, options on two different operating systems, but you can see it's very different uh, approach to doing it. And like I said, we just, we try to take advantage of the operating system and use their tools wherever possible. And that's a spot where it made two different interfaces. Not The rest are pretty much the same. Um, if you like that video, go ahead and click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos a week, including one of these square ones. you would be notified of the release if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please leave us a comment down below. If you're on the fence about which operating system or which color window you like, let me know if that swayed you. Uh, we like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.